Hey everybody, this is Mrs. Ellsworth, and what we're going to be talking about today is squares. So let's talk about one thing first. Let's talk about and list some perfect squares. Okay, so you could write this on the side of your lesson here, or you could even um, add it later on to that bookmark we were talking about in your book for a quick reference. So let's just look at some squares, perfect squares, like one squared. One squared equals one. That's pretty nice. We're going to do a huge list right here. Two squared equals four. Three squared equals nine. Four squared equals 16. Five squared equals 25. Six squared equals 36. You may have to pause the video and catch up here. 7 squared equals 49. 8 squared equals 64. <clears throat> 9 squared equals 81. 10 squared, 100. 11 squared, 121. These right here should all be familiar because they are your perfect squares that you've been doing since elementary all the way up to 12. And then we got a little bit of a challenge after that. Uh, 12 squared equals 144. Okay, 13 squared. And let me extend this. And 14 squared. I have a special way of remembering these because there are a 1 and a 9 and a 6. And so what order will they be? Well, I know 3 times 3 when you're setting up your multiplications will end in a 9. So this can be a 169. And then this one right here will be 4 times 4, which will be 16. So that means that the 6 will be right here. So it's 196. 15 squared. Fifteen squared is two twenty-five, and then like twenty squared equals four hundred. So those right there are some common ones. Okay, so after you get that that um, listed, then um, let's go ahead and look at our assignment here. <clears throat> When you look at the problem set today, I want you to notice the sign in front of the square root. Now what does the square root mean? It means what times itself, what number times itself equals 9, and that is 3. Okay, so that's what they're looking at here. But when you have your problem sets, notice what kind of sign is in front of this thing. Nothing. Negative. Plus or minus. Okay, that has nothing in front of it either. So what number times itself equals 9, and that would be 3, so we're taking the square root. Here's a little bit of teacher talk too. Okay, so 3 squared equals 9, right? Take the square root of that, and that equals 3. You probably don't need to look at this because sometimes those symbols kind of confuse us, but think about it. you got a square, you're going to take the square root of it, so it kind of strips all those, those um, exponent and the, the radical sign off of it and then you just have a 3 left. Notice I have no sign in front of it. Okay, This one has got a negative in front of it, so I'll have a negative in front of my answer. So what's the square root of 64? Well, what number times itself equals 64? Here we go. It's 8. Okay, So it'll just be a negative 8. Okay, And this one has a plus or minus in front of it. And what number times itself equals 4? 2. There we go. This one is a, is a situation that just doesn't work. There is no answer for this one. What number times itself equals 81? Well, nothing, because that would actually be a negative 9 times sine. And that would equal negative 81. You can't have the same number multiplied by itself to have that, so there is no answer on this one. And you can put that on there. Um, some people put no solution. 
Just don't put zero on this because then um, we won't know that you understand it. We want to make sure that you understand there is no way to get this. That they're trying to trick, this is a trick problem really, because there is nothing that equals that. You could write even nothing and I'd feel happier with that. So I want you to do these problems quickly here and, um, and pause the video and answer these four questions. Okay, so what number times itself equals 49? 7. No sign in front of it. We're good. Okay, what number times itself equals 16? That would be 4. There's, an, there's a sign in front. There we go. What number times itself equals 100? That'd be 10. There's a sign in front, plus or minus 10. And then what number equals negative 49? Nothing. Yeah, you could write nothing on those. That'd be fine if you want to make it shorter, but writing out a few letters is not going to kill you either. So um, negative 7 times 7 is what this equals, and there is no solution for that because it's not the same thing. Okay, so moving on. This one's kind of neat. This is really neat. Okay, so we have, um, we're going to estimate now the square root to the nearest integer. Okay, to the nearest integer, so it's really saying a whole number because you're going to have to have a whole number in here. There won't be a negative number in there, but this one here they're saying, um, you know, they're putting a number, a sign in front of it. Okay, so uh, the largest perfect square that is near 33 would be 5 or 36. Okay, so when I look at this, I'm going to go and, um, oopsie. Fill this in. Okay, so 5 times 5, this right here is going to be a perfect square of 5, right? And then if you go and think about this, it's more than 25. In fact, it's actually going to be filling up this one right here quite a bit. This is 6 times 6. And so when you look at the 36, we need 33. So it's everything but 3 squares. I mean, if we were going to say it was close. Let me go and re-explain this here. What number is the closest to the square root of 33? It's the closest to, thir to 6 here. And I was trying to show that not very well here because this right here would actually have to have 8 more squares added to it, wouldn't it? It would have to have 8 more squares added to it, and now you're just low, I mean, short 3 squares here. So it's closest to this one because you're short 3 squares and you'd have to add 8 more squares to get from 25 to 33. This right here is 36 squares because 6 times 6. And so you can see that 33 is really close to that. Now, what do you do if it's kind of close and you don't want to draw out these, these perfect squares? You can get out a number line, and I recommend this. Okay, so when you're looking at a number line, you can do some estimating here. Put a 5 here, put a 6 here when you draw out your number line. Put your square root of 25, square root of 36, and figure out we're on top that the square root of 33 would fit in here. Well, it's a whole lot closer to 36. So we are going to have the answer 6 be in our answer. Okay, it says estimate the square root to the nearest integer. Okay, so there it is. The answer will be 6. Okay, now when you estimate, you don't always put, you don't always just put equals that number. Instead, you would write the square root of 33 is approximately 6. Okay, it's not a perfect equals, is it? It's close to it though. It's the closest to this one, definitely closer than that one. Okay, now the square root of 129, and so we've got some information here. It's so, so nice to have it listed for us. 129 and 21, heck, that's only off by 8. And then when you think the next one up, so that was 11. Okay, when you think the next one up would be 12, and that'd be 144. Okay, so that was off by a lot more than 8, isn't it? So we're going to say that it's closer to 11. Okay, and then of course we've got the negative sign in front of it, so oopsie. So this is approximately negative 11. Okay, so you have to estimate 
which one it is closer to, which perfect square it is closer to. Okay, and so they were nice enough to give us a number line here. So, I mean, maybe you can look at these numbers and think which one is closest to like this and figure out which one, uh, how far away it is. That's fine. That's great. But maybe you need to visualize a little bit more and that's okay. And if you don't want to go and write out the negatives just yet, because notice how they got a negative number line here too, you could also set up your number line in the positive area too, just to figure it out and then make sure you get that negative on your answer. Okay? So, I mean, do this part of the problem with a positive number line and then add your negative later. Okay, so when you look at this, you got a negative 11, negative 12, and then uh, what is it closer to? Well, it's definitely closer to this side right here, so it's going to be the negative 11. Okay, not so bad. Okay, now cube roots. There are some perfect cube roots that I know, and so you should list these ones down too. We know that one cubed equals um, one. Two cubed equals... <laughs> my error there. Okay, two cubed equals eight. Three cubed equals 27. Four cubed equals uh, 64. Five cubed equals 125. Let me let you catch up there. 6 cubed equals um, 216. These last ones I even write down because I don't have them memorized either. 7 cubed, oops, I've been writing squares here. Whoopsie daisy. There we go. So these are all cubes again. That means 6 times 6 times 6 equals that, okay? Anyway, so 7 cubed equals uh, 343. And later on today, when it's time to do homework time, you might want to go and put some of these down on your bookmark for a quick, quick reference. This um, 8 cubed equals 512. 9 cubed equals 729. And then 10 cubed is my favorite for the big numbers. <laughs> and that one equals 1,000. Okay, so when you are finding a cube root, okay, what number times itself times itself equals 343? Just so happens we have this here, and so that you know this number would equal 7. Okay, if they put a negative in front of here or also plus or minus in front of here, you would know to go and add that to it. And then if they have a negative inside of here, now this is a different game. Because we know that a negative 9 times a negative 9 times a negative 9. Okay, that would equal 729 and it's an odd number of negatives, so your answer can be negative. So this right here could be negative 9. There we go. So on the cube roots, this is possible. On the square roots from the, from the section before, it is not possible. Okay, so um, go ahead and, and do these. So pause this quickly. Oops, don't bother with this one. Pause this quickly. Okay, so you should see that the answer to this one is just 4. Okay, and if you're going to go and estimate, it's exactly like it was before, but which number is it closer to? And this one is 19 off, as where this one is more than 25, isn't it? So this one would be closer to 4. You could also set up the number line. I'm going to soon run out of time here. So this right here would equal 4. I'd like you to think about this too. You can use the same exact number line for this one. So teacher, pause it here real quick, and you guys estimate it. Okay, the square root of 72 is even closer to 4, so this right here would be approximately 4. Oops, I shouldn't have had an equal sign there. Okay, um, I'd also like you to look at one other thing really quick here. What was I thinking about here? Um, oh, here's your assignment that you have, and um, you can go ahead and take your time now and work on that. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.